Okay, welcome everyone. Um, good morning, my name is Michelle Merkel. I am president of Junior Achievement of Mahoney Valley. We are pleased today to um, provide you with JA Inspire virtual um, live webinar platform. And our keynote speaker uh, this morning is President Jim Tressel from Youngstown State University. So welcome, President Tressel. Thank you. It really is an honor to be here with JA Inspire. And, and uh, I know we've all taken on a, a whole different a world with all of this virtual discussion and so forth. And, and uh, we're going to get through this, but it's going to have been an experience uh, that we'll never forget, no matter where we are in our, our educational careers or our professional careers. And uh, so I'm so excited to spend just a few minutes with you. And, and I, I wish I could be there with you and, and uh, uh, or even see all of you on the screen. But uh, uh, here's what I would like you to do uh, as we spend a few moments together. I'm assuming you have your phone with you. And if you have your phone with you, I'd like you to take it out and, and go to the notes section because I have four quick things that I would like to share with you um, that uh, I've shared with many, many people over the last four and a half decades of working with uh, students, mostly ages 18 to 22, honestly, but uh, you're in this moment where you're anticipating uh, how will I do the best I can do in the chapter that I'm involved in right now and, and then now, how am I going to move forward into all the different opportunities? And I saw on your list of, of presentations today, you're hearing from a lot of different directions. That's really valuable for you. There are so many ways that you can go, so many opportunities. Uh, we happen to think there are wonderful opportunities here at Youngstown State University in a variety of almost 200 majors. Uh, you can get a major, a minor, you, you can get... Uh, credentials and certificates and everything that you can add to your resume uh, so that you can go and, and uh, go the direction you would like to do. Uh, you know, that's what this time is all about in education. And so on your notes, here's what I'd like you to do. I'd like you to put down note number one, as we're talking about, uh, I guess my whole theme with you will be, let's talk about your journey of success. So number one, in that journey of success is to dream. So if you could put down number one, dream, and then maybe put a little backslash and put down plan, and maybe another backslash and put down goals. And so the first step that I have always believed that one needs, needs to make uh, as they start uh, setting forward on that journey of success and the beauty of living in this country is you can decide whatever direction you want that journey to be. It can be in the trades, it can be in higher education, you can go and invent your own business. There are a million different ways you can go. You get to decide where that journey leads. But I think there are certain steps, regardless of journey, that you need to keep in mind. And step number one is to dream, to plan, and to have goals. I think any time that we're going to the, from point A to point B, or maybe from here to the mall or from here to wherever, the first thing we have to do is, is think about what it is we want to do when we get there. You know, what's our goal? We want to think about what's the path to get there. You know, what are the directions from my house to the mall or, or if, even if I'm on a computer, you know, how do I get from this point to that point? What clicks do I have to make, you know, to get from here to there? But step number one in the journey of success is to dream and to plan and to set goals. I've found that the people that take a little bit of time and really do a lot of uh, dreaming about what it is they would really be excited to be a part of, what it is that uh, they really have in mind that they could really see as a, as a, a meaningful, fulfilling future, if, if they sit down and, and they um, make a blueprint. If you were building a house, the first thing you would do is you would make a blueprint. But first, before that, you would dream about what you want that house to look like. And so in that first step on the journey of success, we've got a dream. We've got a plan. We've got to set goals. We've got to create a blueprint. 
The second note on your notes on your phone I would like you to put is a real simple second step. And it's the word work. We can dream, we can set goals, we can make plans, we can write blueprints. And then it comes down to the next step is we've got to go to work. And, and I've noticed that the people who have that willingness to roll up their sleeves, to do what it takes to get where they would like to go. If I want to go and, and be a doctor, well, you know, the one thing I know, I'm going to have to roll up my sleeves and I'm going to have to be good in math and science, biology and chemistry. Those things are a must. If I'm building that house and the blueprint says the first thing I have to do is build that foundation under the house, well, that's kind of what that biology and math and, and chemistry and so forth are on that goal of becoming a doctor. You have to go to work. You have to start digging. You have to start studying. You have to start training. You have to put the work in. There's no question. Anyone that tries to tell you that there's a shortcut to success, not in the dreams that you have. If your dreams are lofty, if your dreams are ones that really excite you, there's no shortcut to accomplishing those dreams. There's no shortcut on that blueprint when you're wanting to build that house that is, is the house that you would like to live in. There's no shortcuts. We've got to make sure that the foundation is built well, and then we've got to put the wiring in or the plumbing in. We've got, we've got to do all the things that it takes. We used to always say that if you want a place in the sun, expect some blisters. Don't let anyone tell you that good things, your journey for success won't take work. And you have to be willing to, to go for it. You have to be willing to, to maybe do some things that others aren't willing to do because you have that desire to put the work in to be successful, to realize your dreams, to reach your goals, to build the house that you've got the blueprint for. Step number two, in the journey of success is work. Step number three that I want you to put into your phone. Handle, H-A-N-D-L-E, handle adversity. A-D-V-E-R-S-I-T-Y, handle adversity. And another slash, handle success. So the third step that I really think sometimes is maybe one of the most difficult steps is that while we have that blueprint and we have those plans and we have and we putting the work in and we're doing what it's going to take to have that successful journey, inevitably there's going to be tough times happen. Kind of like what we faced when uh, we were putting all the work in last year about March and then they sent us home, whether they sent us home from your high school situation or they sent us home from the university situation. That was an adversity. We had to handle that. We had to figure out how our faculty could pivot and get the curriculum that our students needed to learn, the work that they needed to get done. We needed to put it into a remote fashion. So we had to handle that tough situation. Our students had to handle the fact that they weren't in the classroom, that they had to be staring at these computers all day long. They had to handle the adversity that came their way. Regardless of what we're doing along that journey of success, we know there's gonna be unfortunate, difficult, challenging things that happen. That's just the way it is. Sometimes I might be in the middle of a class and maybe I didn't study for the right thing and I don't get as good a grade on the test as I could have. I've gotta handle that adversity. I've gotta handle that disappointment. I've gotta go back and think about how could I have prepared for that better? What else should I have studied? Who do I need to go talk to to get back on the direction that I would like to go? But as important as you're dreaming, as important as you're working, is handling everything that comes your way. And interestingly enough, success sometimes is hard to handle. I've had students who have said, you know what, I got an A on the first test, I've got this down. Or I'm progressing exactly the way I would like to and I've got this down. And, and maybe they stop working as hard. Maybe they stop putting in the time and the effort 
that they did when they got that first A or when they were progressing and they become a little bit complacent. When things are going well is the time to make sure that you continue to put that work in, continue to get with the people that are important to help you continue to progress toward your journey of success. But just like step number one is those dreams and step number two is that work, step number three is we have to handle anything that comes our way, whether it's adversity or success, we've got to handle that. And the only thing I can tell you for sure, most of you are probably anywhere from 15 to 18 years old, I'm guessing, uh, in your future, there's going to be times when it's going exactly how you'd hoped. The dream is, is moving along. The goals are being accomplished. The blueprint is being built upon. And then something's going to happen. That's just the way life is. You're going to need to handle that situation. You're going to need to find out where you need to get some counsel or to get some uh, assistance or to learn some lessons from whatever happened to not go your way. But we've got to handle adversity and handle success. And then the last step that I want you to put in your phone, number four, is I want you to put in your phone that you, one single word, believe. That you need to believe. If you've got honorable dreams and good dreams and a good blueprint and good goals, and you're putting the work in and you're doing what it's going to take to realize those dreams, and you know there's going to be ups and downs, you know there's going to be adversity and success, and, and you know what, you're going to deal with that. You're going to handle those ups and downs. Ultimately, final step on the journey of success is that you've got to believe. You've got to believe in yourself. It starts with the belief in yourself. We can't worry about maybe what anyone else happens to think or if they tell us, oh, you know, you'll never be able to do that or no one's ever done that at this high school, or no one's ever accomplished this or that, don't believe them. Believe in you. Believe in yourself. Certainly, you have to have the right goals and blueprint. You have to have the, the work's got to be put in, and you got to handle the ups and downs. But ultimately, it's going to come down to, as you look in the mirror, do you believe in you? Do you believe in you? The beauty of it is, I know your parents believe in you. I know your teachers believe in you. I know your guidance counselors believe in you. And those that are really good friends, I mean, that are, they're genuine friends, they believe in you. Now the important thing is you've got to believe in you. I remember years and years ago, when I first came to Youngstown State, 30 some years ago, way before any of you were born, I remember saying to our team, and Youngstown State at that point had never won a national championship in football, and I was coming in as the football coach. And I told the guys, I said, hey, we're never going to be the national champions until we believe we will be. So I want you to think about memorizing this poem. And I gave them a little poem, and it went like this. Somebody said that it couldn't be done, but he with a chuckle replied that maybe it couldn't. But he would be one who wouldn't say so till he tried. So he buckled right in with a trace of a grin on his face. If he worried, he hid it. And he started to sing as he tackled the thing that couldn't be done, and he did it. And I asked him to memorize that. And I asked him to say that often. Say it once a day. Say it twice a day. Convince yourself that we can do this that I can do this. And I would offer to you that in that journey of success, if you'll dream dreams, make plans, build blueprints, number two, go to work, 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 work. If number three, you'll handle the adversity and the successes along the way and learn from them and keep moving forward. And ultimately number four, if you'll believe you'll believe whatever the mind of man can conceive, the mind of man can achieve. Whatever you believe, you can achieve. And so I would, I would offer that as a, as a challenge to you 
to see if you can take each of those four steps, knowing it won't be easy, knowing you're going to have a lot of help. That's the beauty of education here in America. That's the beauty of, of having good people around you. That's the beauty of surrounding yourself with the right kinds of friends who will encourage you and work with you and work with one another. Your journey of success can be a successful one. And so with that, I wanted to make sure we left enough time, Michelle, for any question and answers. And, and I'd love to answer anything about Youngstown State or any other educational situation or about the journey of success. Wonderful. So with that, there is a Q&A box down at the bottom of your um, webinar. And so we cannot hear you. You'll have to type in the Q&A your questions and I will read them to President Tressel. Um, I do have a question from Zane. What is your message to upcoming freshmen at YSU? You know, it's interesting <laughs> that the common denominator that I've seen for successful students in the collegiate environment, ages 18 to 22, that I've watched for, this is my 46th year with college students. And here's three common things, Zane, that I've, I've grown to really believe. Number one, friends. Do a great job of selecting your friends. Friends that will, you'll enjoy being around. Friends that will help you make good decisions. Friends that will tell you the truth, maybe when you're not making good decisions. Friends who have the same kinds of goals that you have, that have the same kind of work ethic that you have, that have the same kinds of dreams. I've noticed students in college that surround themselves with the right people are ultimately the ones who are very successful. And I've noticed just the opposite. The ones that maybe did a poor job of selecting friends and maybe were hanging around people that didn't have uh, the lofty goals that they might have had, didn't have the aspirations they might have had, um, those students didn't end up reaching their potential. That's the first thing that we like mm -hmm. to tell our freshmen. Second thing we like to tell our freshmen is get involved. Get involved in things. Certainly, you're going to need to be at all of your classes and take the classes that are prescribed for whatever your academic major is. If you're in our College of Business, you have to take certain things. If you're in engineering, certain things. In nursing, certain things. Psychology, certain things. You have to do that, but also get involved. I know our College of Business talks all the time about the importance of engagement, being a part of the business groups, whether it's the Society of HR Managers or being a part of the Accounting Club or being a part of the Investment Club, going out and, and getting experiences within your major. And I would also say in that involvement part, Zane, is get involved in other things on campus. I know one of the most valuable things I ever did in college 100 years ago was I was on the student newspaper staff. And we had to put together a newspaper and we had to work together because everyone wanted more inches on the paper and, and we had to sell advertising and we had to do this and we had to do that. It was a great experience. Be involved in sports, be involved in the marching band, be involved in fraternities and sororities and community service and so forth. The second thing I've noticed, the successful students are the ones involved beyond the classroom. And then the third and last one that I would tell you, Zane, that has really been a common denominator that I've noticed is the students who really pay attention and become financially astute, financially literate. They make good financial decisions. They understand that they want to efficiently get through college. They want, to, before they select their college, they're going to look closely at the fine print about what, what are the costs? Am I taking loans? You know, what's this going to end up costing me? Because the reality about life is when you guys were in elementary school, you weren't really that expensive. You got into high school, we had to get your driver's license, car insurance, cell phone, then we got you another cell phone, then we got you another cell phone, then we got you another cell phone, and then you went to college, that's even more expensive. But the step after college, Maybe when you're starting your own business 
or you're going to medical school, or you're wanting to buy a house or start a family or whatever, those are really expensive. And the better decisions you make while you're in college and don't allow yourself to build up a whole bunch of debt, that's life-changing. And I've noticed people that pay attention to good financial decisions are the ones that really, their trajectory as they leave the university is much, much better. So I would say friends, involved, finances. Very good. Okay, so... Noah wants to know if YSU has a radio communications class. Yes, in fact, uh, our Youngstown State University communications major just built a new building, as a matter of fact, uh, where we have broadcasting laboratories, sports broadcasting laboratories. Uh, they're really heavily in the social media communications futures. Uh, we have an outstanding faculty who is very involved in communications. Uh, we need good traditional communications. We still need to, to write well. We still need to, to be able to speak. So we have communications classes, but then the whole communications industry, whether it be on the marketing side or it be on the broadcasting side, all of those sports broadcasting, whatever it happens to be, we happen to have a very comprehensive program. One of our, really one of our larger majors and, and the beauty of a communications major is regardless of what you end up doing, if you're a good communicator, if you write well, if you listen well, if you speak well, if you know how to tell a story, you're going to be able to do anything. So I always like looking for communications majors, regardless of the job uh, that we're looking to fill, because I know if you're a communicator, you can be successful. Very good. Um, so we only have a couple more minutes left. If you have a question or answer, please type it in. Um, we do have a question from, I, I'll use Lambert. Any suggestions on staying motivated in school? You know, I think the best thing uh, to stay motivated in school might be twofold. One is to keep those goals in front of you that you've set and the plan you have to accomplish that in front of you a lot, to remind you of what it's gonna take. And just to keep referring back to, hey, here's the plan. And, and I've gotta follow this plan. I've gotta monitor my progress. And then the other one I would tell you is, kind of refers back to the whole friends part of things. Get used to being around people who feed off one another, who help motivate one another, who remind one another that, hey, we better go down and study for that chemistry test. You know, we've got to get moving here. Or, hey, we've got to start thinking about going up and signing up for our internship and going out and getting some uh, practical experience, relevant learning, and, and even getting paid while we're doing it. And just reminding one another, what are the steps we need to take? And it's, it's a hard one to stay motivated alone. And, and that's why developing relationships with faculty is so important. One of the advantages of Youngstown State University, I really believe, is that we're a mid-sized school, very affordable tuition, which I think is huge. We have an intimacy on our campus that's like a small school but we have the programs that are like a very large school. If you take advantage of creating those relationships with faculty, which are available here, they will help you stay motivated. They'll constantly get you engaged, maybe in undergraduate research, pique your curiosity. You know, to stay motivated means to stay curious. And, and one of the key things is, is to constantly be curious about what more I would like to learn. And so if, if you'll surround yourself with the right friends and get engaged with the faculty and keep that plan right in front of you, it's not easy. You know, it's tough. And boy, is it tough now when we're having to do this remotely and virtually. This is really a test for us. But if, if you'll keep that plan in mind and you'll surround yourself with the right people, especially our faculty, uh, we'll be able to help you 
uh, keep that level of motivation, you'll need to be successful. Are you muted, Michelle? I can't hear you. <laughs> okay, okay, President Russell, thank you. I appreciate your time today. Um, this is gonna conclude our session. There are lots of questions and answers um, on here. A lot of the students are asking what degrees that you offer. And I just wanna remind everyone that Youngstown State University does have a virtual exhibitor booth set up and they have um, staff manned in the booth and they'll be able to um, answer your questions as far as degrees <laughs> and what Youngstown State has to offer. Um, so I do um, want you to attend that booth and answer those questions there. Um, if I, I, could, also if wanna... I could tease their appetite yeah. real quick, we have five colleges, it's real simple. We have a STEM college, science, technology, engineering, uh, mathematics, for those of you that are involved in that, outstanding. We have a College of Health and Human Services, whether it's nursing, uh, respiratory therapy, dietetics, dental hygiene, social work, criminal justice, anything that touches the human. We have a College of Education and Social Sciences. If you wanna be a teacher, English, philosophy, sociology, history, they're all in our Big League College of Liberal Arts, Social Science and Education. We have the College of Creative Arts, if you have that creative part of you, the Dana School of Music, the Musical Theater and Dance, uh, the Art, uh, and whom, oh, and, the, and then the Williamson College of Business Administration, Finance, Accounting, Marketing, Management, all of those things, again, the programs of any major college, and do go to our virtual booth. Okay, so I appreciate that message. This ends our session. Um, this will be recorded and be able to access it after the live event today. So you can come back and visit uh, President Trestle's message if you joined us late. Um, but I appreciate everybody's time. President Trestle, I appreciate your Thank time. You. I appreciate pleasure. your positive message to our students. And I will end this uh, recording. Thank, Thank you. you.